Okay, so it's been a while that we are Oisik and Hilchas Tfilo. And in these difficult days, what is more important than Tfilo? What is more important than Tfilo? So when I spoke Shabbos to my Kehillah, and how do I speak Chalamoid, Shabbos Chalamoid to my Kehillah? My Kehillah now consists of 14 people. So as many in Eretz Yisrael, I paskined that you could have a minion from Chatzeres, from Mir Pesot, and in Eretz Yisrael, it's very broadly accepted. So in my backyard, some of you visited my home. Rabbi Gadesman did many times. So we are five Shechenim, one on top of the other. We all see each other. And I get up on a chair, and I say, Divrei Chizok, and I give shiurim. So usually Chalamoid, throughout Chalamoid, I speak to about 10,000 people. Every day there are two, three, four shiurim. Every shul, there are only major shuls, and throughout the Chalamoid, I speak to 10,000 people. This Chalamoid, I spoke to 10 people. Well, by Zoom, I spoke to many, but my kehila now consists of 14 or 15 people, our neighbors and six different chatzeres. So we see each other over the fence and Bor uh, Hashem. Uh, the ikar is, we have the opportunity to be married. So I said, I spoke about Shira Shirim. And a Shira Shirim, the Safano in his introduction writes that Shira Shirim is a story about Golus. The Doid and the Raya, love each other desperately, but they cannot connect and they don't seem to find each other. That is the story of Golus, says the Sephorno. And the Raya runs around town and she says, where is my dad? Where is he? Where has he gone? He went away. He's far away. But the Pesach says, Hine is the Acha Kosleinu. He's not far away. He's very close. He's very close. So why doesn't he show his face? Why doesn't he open the door? Because he says, Hashmi'ini es koileich. And the Sephorna says, Hashmi'ini es koileich is tefilo. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mesavah litefilo sin shal tzadikim. He wants to hear us plea. He wants to hear us pray. He wants to hear us cry. So, we have a feeling that we learn so much, we daven so much, but obviously it's not enough. And the Kodesh Bogu still says, Ashmini is kolech. So in these difficult times, nothing is more important than tefillah. So it's most appropriate that we are oisik and hilchis tefillah. And I was asked today to speak specifically about tefillahs out of this. <clears throat> so there's a machlokis rabban gamliel and rabbi Yeshua, brochas chov zayin amid beis. How do we define tefillahs arvis? Is arvis similar to shachas and mincha? The other Sagdoshim, Avrom Tikkun Shachas, Yitzchok Tikkun Mincha, Yaakov Tikkun Arvis. And does Arvis have the same significance, the same weight as Shachas and Mincha? Rabbi Gamliel says, Tvilas Arvis Choivo, just like Shachas and Mincha, Rabbi Yeshua says, Tvilas Arvis Lishus. And the Gemara Paskins, in accordance to Rabbi Yeshua, Tvilas Arvis is not a Choivo, but rather a Rishus. So Toysus asks the Gaval de Gikasha, and all the other Rishoyim follow in the footsteps of Toysus. So why does the Gemara say, You don't need to say the Shmoines again because in the Kachin of the Balaylo. So the reason you don't need to say in other Shmoines, why is it only because in the Kachin of the Balaylo? And why doesn't the Gemara simply say because it's a Rishos? And if it's not a Choyva, how can you have a Chiv? To daven again. You weren't mechuyiv to daven in the first place. So Toysvis maintains, and that Toysvis appears many times in Shas. Chov Zayin Omed Beis, Chov Vav Omed Aleph, Lamed Omed Beis, and Baruch Hashabbos, Daf Tes Omed Beis, Yomed Daf Beis Zayin Omed Beis. Many times in Shas, Toysvis says, Tfilas Avos Rishus Legabe Choyvo Ein Levatlo Bechinon. It's an important filler. And it is incumbent upon us, in a way it's a chayvah, but it's not the same level of chiyuv as shachas and mincha. Ein levatlo bechinom, only for a mitzvah oiveres. 
and some places the Shas Taisa says, not even for a mitzvah Yveres. So Taisa says, there is a certain level of Chayvah, but it's not the same as Shachas and Mincha. Taisa suggests a different interpretation as well. And that is in Taisus in Yume Beizayin and in Chigigid Aftes, Kiblu Alayu Choivo. Originally, Tulis Avish really was a Rishus. Rishus and nothing more, but Kiblu Alayu Choivo. And in the concept, in the sort of Kiblu Alayu Choivo, we find two different interpretations, two different approaches, two different Mahalchim. The Rosh, the Russian Rabbeinu Yoyin understand Kiblo Lechoi was personal. This person davened Ma'arav yesterday and the day before yesterday and the day before the day before yesterday. And he did it many times and his meaning is to daven every night and therefore Kiblo Lechoi was. Definitely regarding the halach of Shochach Loi Meyala Veyoloi, he davened Ma'arav tonight. So when he davened in the first place, kibbal alayu choivo. And therefore, if not, ein mekad shenes achoydish balaylo, he would be required to daven again. So according to the Ben Yoyin and the Rosh, kibbal alayu choivo is something personal. This person, this individual, kibbal alayu choivo. So if he's about shuv and he daven, never daven marav in his life, there is no kibbal alayu choivo. Then he's not mechuyiv, according to this interpretation and the concept of kibbal alayu choivo. However, the Rif, Broches Yudches, and the Rambam, the Rambam Perkalaf Alochavov, the Rambam writes, Kvar Nagu Kol Yisroel to Daven Marav, and according to the Rambam and the Rif, Kibro Layachoivo, is not this individual was Makabal Olav Choivo, but it's a Kabbalah Klolis of Klal Yisroel. And Toysus and Chagigan and Yume, as I quoted, bring both different interpretations. Two different mahalchim and kiblu alayu choiva. Is it a personal Kabbalah or is it the Kabbalah of Kalal Yisroel? So this is a mahalach that Toysus quotes in the, in the name of Halachas Gedoilis. But as I just made it very clear, many, many Rishonim follow in the footsteps of Halachas Gedoilis, most notably the earliest and greatest Rishonim. That's the Rif, the Rambam. Toysus quotes the Halachas Gedoilis. So two different mahalchem. Is this unique to Tfilis Arvis? Or we find a concept of Kiblu Alaya Choivo by other halochas as well. So the earliest source is Tfilis Arvis. I do not recall at this moment other sources, but by later Poiskim, oh, we find it many times in many different sugyas. So what is relevant? Dova be'itoi, Svira Suwaima. So we are in the midst of the midst of Svira Suwaima. So almost all the poets can say, Noshim are potter from Svira Suwaima. And that's the Mughan of Rome at the beginning of Simitov Beites. And why are Noshim potter from Svira Suwaima? Because it's a mitzvah to say, Shehazman Grama. So there's a fascinating Ramban. We won't speak about this today. It's not our sugya, but the Ramban in Kedushin of Ramadalad writes, that no shemachai v'sinis woyma because it's a mitzvah to say she'ein has man grama, and why would that be? Of course, it's man grama. It's ben pesach latzeres, no other time. So the new minchas osha, pesach sviyas woyma and shavuos. There's an interesting discussion about this, and a very very mechudish tikkapshat that I suggested in the Ramban. But anyway, the Mogan of Rome says women are exempt from the mitzvah of Sviyas Woymer because it's a mitzvah of Seisha's man grama. But nevertheless, writes the Mogan of Rome, Kiblu alayu choivo. And this is a gaval de Why is it a chiddish? Not the svara. But usually, B'nai Ashkelah's paskan in accordance to the Mogan of Rome. Mogan of Rome is rush in addition to the paiskim of his era, especially for B'nai Ashkenaz. But this is a chiddish that I don't think anyone really accepted halacha la I don't think any later poiskim say that noshim are chayev in sviris oimim mishum shikib lo la So usually we always adhere to the Mughal of Rome, but not in this case. In most kehilas you saw, there wasn't a special kapeda 
that women say Svidas Woymer, the Mishnah Guru doesn't say Kiblu Anayochoyvo. So the Nazir Shimshon, one of the most important and Choshev Achoin in Mishochan Ochorachayim, disagrees with the Mugan of Rome. And he says, the Gavaldik Yechidish, he says, Kiblu Anayochoyvo only works, is only relevant if there's a Machloik is a Poiskin. Chayevoy Potor. So Kiblu Anayochoyvo is Kedas HaMechayev. For instance, Tfilis Arvis, it's a machloikis rabbi gamliel v'rabi Yushua. It's a machloikis in Amiroim, rav in other Amiroim, halochik rabbi gamliel halochik rabbi Yushua. So that is where Kibro olay choyvo is relevant. But no one says noshem ar chayiv, and therefore Kibro olay choyvo just doesn't work. That's the argument of Nazir Shimshin. And the Minachas Chinoch doesn't quote Nazir Shimshin, but in Mr. Shinvav, he also disagrees with the Mugram for the same reason. So that is one source, an additional source, Kiblu Alayu Chayvah, the Mugram Om, regarding Svira Zuaymar. And other Mugram Avrom, Tov Kuf Tzadik Aleph, Malchi Zechroi Nois Shoifois. Mugram Avrom says, Kiblu Alayu Chayvah, it's not a Chiyav Gomer saying, Ten Psukum, Malchi Zechroi Nois Shoifois, Kiblu Alayu Chayvah. So we have two different Mugram Avroms regarding Kiblu Alayu Chayvah. Maybe, one of the greatest chedushim is the Bekiva Ego. Tshuva is the Bekiva Ego, Semen Aleph. Not in the actual Tshuva, but in the Hashemotas at the end of the Sefer. By the Mafteiches, there are Hashemotas, Shere Bekiva Ego, and the Bekiva Ego writes that Noshem are Chayev in Sukkah, Lulav, and Shoifor, Mishum Shikiblu, Allah Yochoivo, which is also a Gaval, the Gechidish. But that is what the Bekiva Ego says. So this the Bekiva Ego doesn't fit in with the Nazir Hashem, Shere, and the Minchas Chinuch. Because no shema poter mina suka mina lulav mina shoifom, it's not a machloikis. But Rabbi Kivegi says, Kiblu alayu choiva, which is also a gaval de gechidish. We're not aware that no shem kiblu alayam choiva, especially not suka. So the home of the chsam soif, the no shem were mat bedanatilis lulav, but not an yeshiva besuka. So three additional halachas in which we find the concept of kiblu alayu chayva. Malchi is a chroy le shayfas, mogan avrom tov kuf tzadik alaf. Svi is a woymar, mogan avrom tov pei tes at the beginning of the semen. Rebbe kiva ega hashmot as semen alaf and the chubis, sukkah, lulav, shayfa. All these three sources are not the personal Kabbalah, but rather based on the Rif and the Rambam, by Tfilis Arvis, Kiblu Alei Choyva of Klal Yisroel. So the Rambam says, Kiblu Alei Choyva Tfilis Arvis. But there still is a difference between Tfilis Arvis and Shachris Mincha, even after she Kiblu Aleihem Choyva. And we find in the Rambam, in Hilchas Tfilis, three halachas, which set Tvilas Avis apart, different than Shachas and Mincha, based on the Halacha Tvilas Avis Rishus. Perigim Halacha Zayin Hilchas Tvilas Al Rambam. The Rambam writes, Tvilas Avis Ein Midnachtikin Bismano, and that is why Rav Tzoli Shol Shabbos Biyerev Shabbos. Kimish Tvilas Avis Rishus Ein Midnachtikin Bismano. Regarding Shachas and Mincha, we are very mad by these mad filler. You can't have in Shachas before the Alois. You can't have in Mincha before Chatzois. You're not Yoitza. Tvilis Arvis, we'd have an early. Amen, Dr. Kibbizmano. Even Leil Shabbos. Rab Soli Shul Shabbos, Be'er Shabbos, that I'm memorized. Because Tvilis Arvis is just Ain Medak the Kibbizmano. Perik Tes, Aloha Tes, that I'm memorized. There is no Chazor Sashatz by Tvilis Arvis because Tvilis Arvis is Shus. The entire concept of Chazor Sashatz is because the Shriach Sibir is Moitzi, Misha Enoi Boki. But because Tvilis Arvis is Shus, he doesn't need to be Moitzi anyone. And that is why we do not find Chazor Sashatz by Tvilis Arvis. So once again, even though Kiblo Aleim Choyva, but we didn't institute Chazor Sashatz because even though Kiblo Aleim Choyva, it's still fundamentally. Halacha number three, Perikyut, Halachasvela, Halachavov, the Rambam writes, a Groisachidish. 
Avot Tvila Shachas, Musaf Mincha, if a person just forgot that he davened, and he starts davening again, second time around, and suddenly he realizes that he already davened, he is Poisek Ben Sat Filo. By Tvila Shachas, he could be Mashlem Bet Filo. Shemet Chila Lo Yispalo Al Das Choivo. So the Rambam writes, Shachas, Mincha, Musaf, any tefillah that's a choivo, if you realize in the middle of davening, you're already davening, it's a brochal of a tolo. You can daven twice. So it's a brochal of a tolo. Soon, we'll speak about Kavad, the that we find in Rambam, uh, that the custom was be a mekedem, that people daven twice, mincha every day, mincha gedoyla, mincha gedano, pere gimel, aloche gimel, and Rambam. And Whenever I mention this aloha, people open their eyes, it seems to be a gavaldi gechidish to them. Davening twice mincha, mincha gedoyla plus mincha ketana, and people don't realize it's an entire siman in shulchan orach oir achayim. Siman reish lamedalet in shulchan orach achayim is the halacha of davening mincha twice. And it's a machoikis between gedoyla svarad and gedoyla ashkadaz. Which one is the Tfilis Choyv and which one is the Tfilis Nedova? Is Minche Gedoyle Nedova and then Minche Ketana Choyv or the other way around? But generally, if you're already davened and you realize you're davening again, you stop in the middle of Shemay Nesa. Tfilis Havis is different. Because in the first place, it wasn't the Tfilis Choyv and therefore you could continue. It's a Rishus anyway. It's a Nedova anyway. So we do find in Rambam, in three clear halachas, even though the Rambam maintains kiblu aleyu choivom, but it still is different than a tefillah which is a choiva me'ikar hadin. And therefore tefillah service does have different halachas. Ein medak dekem bezmano, im nizkar einoi poiseik, and there is no chazoes. Hashaz. And there is no Chazos Hashaz because the Shriach Sebe doesn't need to be Moitzi anyone. So when the Rambam writes this halacha, halacha number three that I just mentioned, other Tvilis, if you remember in the middle that you davened already, and by mistake you started davening again. So when the Rambam writes you could daven twice Mincha, it's only Mincha Gedoyla and Mincha Ketana. And it's only when you're aware that you davened already, and you intend to daven again. But if by mistake you started davening again, poisek b'yemtza. By arves, is maslem b'tfila. And the Ravid disagrees with the Rambam, and the Ravid writes four words, ein ka nacha suruach. You know, the signal of the Ravid is fascinating, and many times he doesn't even explain why does he disagree. Sometimes he's so sharp, so chorif, ein kan and he doesn't even see it necessary to share with us why do you think the Rambam is wrong, ein kan nachasuach. So the case of Mishnah's understanding in the Ravid is, well, the Rambam says that kiblu aleyu choivo, perekarav alchavov. So if it's a choivo, why would it be different than shachas and mincha and musa? It was rishos, but no longer. And therefore, it should have the same aloha as Shachas Mincha Musa. It has evolved into a Tfilis Choivo. Now there is a Tfilis Choivo. It needs to be Poisek, then Satfila. That is the understanding of the Kes of Mishnah and the Taina of the Rabbit. Comes along Rab Chaim Briscoe. Rab Chaim says, Kiblo Alayam Choiv is on the Gavra. But the chefza of tefillah is a chefza of tefillah. And this is so typical of Reb Chaim. So Reb Chaim doesn't need my compliments, but with Reb Chaim, a new era developed in, in, you know, in the Ulema Yeshivas. And most of Reb Chaim's solution are based on the distinction between Gabra and chefza, as Avi Ben Teir knows. So once again, Reb Chaim comes along and Reb Chaim differentiates between the chefza of tefillah and the choyver, which rests upon the gavra. So Rab Chaim says, Kiblu Olayim Choyv is relevant to the gavra. Whether it's a Kabbalah protis, as I quoted the Rosh and Toysvis, Rabbeinu Yoyna, whether it's a Kabbalah Saklal, 
as I quoted from the Riff and the Rambam, Benkach who Benkach, it's on the Gava. Kibro Lehem Choyv, and therefore he needs to daven. But the Chefza of Tvila Sabbath doesn't change, and it's a Chefza of Nedova, of Rishus, and therefore he could be Mashlem with Torah's Nedova. So that's Abchaim Breska. And Abchaim Go is following on the understanding of the Kesa Mishnah. Why is the Rav Choyv Lekal Rambam? Because Kibro Lehem Choyv. Many times I apologize to my Talmidim and I say, if we would have the right to disagree with Kadmoineinu, then we would forego that right. It's not something we enjoy. But it's probably a choyvo and not a schus. It's not a privilege. It's, it's an obligation. And every Talmud Chochem needs to learn with the light HaKodesh Baruch Hu gave him. V'sein chalkeinu b'seru secho. The God says, V'sein chalkeinu b'seru secho. Each and every one has his own chalik and Torah. And this is my chalik and Torah. So many times I find myself apologizing to people. But I disagree with the case of Mishnah with the greatest Tachnoa and his matlas, Ofrani Tachas Kapas but I think when the Ravid states a general disagreement, Enka Nachas Ruach, why doesn't the Ravid explain what his kasha is? And most of the he does. So I think when the Ravid has just a general disagreement, Enka Nachas Ruach, the Ravid is choylek, al ikar svor sarambam. So the argument, of the Ravid would be, Lishit as a Rambam and Perikal of Allah of all, that the Rambam says, Kiblu and Ayochoivo, and it's no longer very shoes, Rambam Lishit also, it's all Chiyun. Then the Ravid will explain that. So when the Ravid just comes along and he says, Inka Nachasroch, Ena Dvorem Nachoinim, I think the way to understand the Hasoga is, Me Ikra de Dina Perch. It's not because of the Shita Saramba Mishitosa Kibro Olayim Choyva. The Ravid disagrees fundamentally with the entire concept. So, my understanding in the Ravid would be Rashus is not Nedova. Two different concepts. Nobody says that Tfilis Avis is a Tfilis Nedova. Tfilis Nedova is like a Korben Nedova. Tfilis Arvis is one of the three Tfilois Kavuois, Yankov Ovinu Tikin Arvis. So Arvis is a Takona. So there are two different opinions. Embrochas Chavavavah Midbeis. What are the three Tfilis? Ovois Tiknum, Keneget Karbonois Tiknum. Benkach, Bekenkach, it's a Takona. That's the lesson of the Gemara Tiknum. Keneged Karbono is Tiknum, Ovo is Tiknum. So the three Tfilis are either at the corner of the Ove Sagdoisha Maromi Sukyankov or at the corner of Anche Knesset Sagdoilo. So even if Tfilis Avis is Shus, it's not Nedova. Nedova is not at the corner. Nedova is totally dependent on your free will. So let's go back to the beginning of this year. Before Kiblo Alayu Choivo, what's the Teretz of Taisvis? To the Gavaldi Gekasha, Philis Avis Shus. Why does the Gemara need to say, Shochach Yalavi Yobar Balailu? He does not need to daven again because Ein Mekacher the Sachoidish Balailu. And why doesn't the Gemara simply say, He doesn't need to daven again because Philis Avis Shus? So Toysa says, It's not Mamish Arishus, it's only Arishus. Ein Yesh Levat Lo Bishu Mitzvoy Veres, Aval Ein Levat Lo Bechinom. Tfilis Nadovi, you could be Mavatl Bechinam. Tfilis Nadovi, you have no choyva at all. So it goes without saying. That's a simple assumption. That Tfilis Avis is a Takona. As I quoted the Loshan of the Gemara, it's either Avois Tiknum or Keneged Karbonois Tiknum. It's a Takona. So when Rabbi Yeshua says Tfilis Avis, it shows he means. That the Takana wasn't Betoiris Choive Gemuro, it was Betoiris Rishos, but it's a Takana. It's a Takana either of Anshe Knesset Sagdoila or of Yankoiv Ovinu. And therefore, 
My understanding of the Rav would, would be, and the Rav would say, what's the difference whether it's Choyv or Rishus? Just like you can't have a half a Tvila Choyv and a half a Tvila Nidav, it's either the entire Tvila Choyv or the entire Tvila Nidav. And that's why, if you realize you already daven, you need to stop in the middle of the Shemarinesa. The same regarding Rishus and Nidav, because Rishus and Nidav are not the same. So, regardless of whether Tfilis Arva Choyva or Tfilis Arva Rishus, it's not the same as Nadova. You can't have half a Tfilis Rishus and half a Tfilis Nadova. That's the argument of the Rabbit. So, according to my understanding, it's Me'ikra the Deen at Percham. And that is why the Rabbit doesn't see a need to explain what's his Kasha. The Rabbit says the Rambam doesn't make sense. What's the difference whether it's choiva or rishus? It's not nedava. And just like you can't have a half a tefillah b'toyles choiva and a half a tefillah b'toyles nedava, you can't have a half a tefillah b'toyles rishus and a half a tefillah b'toyles nedava. That would be my understanding in Asogis Aravid. So according to the case of Mishnah's understanding, Reb Chaim offers pshat b'divrei Rambam. But according to my understanding, Reb Chaim's teres is no longer relevant. That's not the kasha. And if that's not the kasha, that's not the teres. So my teres and the Rambam would be Rambam Lishit also. The Rambam Sof Pelek Aleph Melchist Fela. It's very interesting. The Rambam is based on the Gemara I just quoted in Brochus Chavavah in the base. Tfilis Keneget Korbono is Tiknum. And we find in Perek Aleph El Chesfer Rambam three halachas, which are basically Dina Karbonis, and from Karbonis they come to El Chesfer. In Shulchan Och we find more. Shulchan Och writes that because Tfilas are connected Karbonis, it is so important to have proper Kavana when you daven. Because a korban is nifsal be machshava, whether it's machshav is pigul or machshav is shaloi lishma. So just like a korban is nifsal be machshava, tefile is nifsal be machshava. So in Shulchan Aruch and in the later place, given that Moshe, we find various different halachas, which fundamentally come from either karbonis and from karbonis, they evolve to hilchas tefilo. But in the Rambam, we find primarily Three alochas. There is no Tfilis Nadova and Shabbos because there is no Korban Nadova and Shabbos. The only Korbanus that you could bring on Shabbos is Korban or Sibur Shekavu Alehem Zman. And because there is no Korban Nadova and Shabbos, there could be no Tfilis Nadova and Shabbos. Halocha number one. Halocha number two. You could never daven Musaf bin Nadova. Because Korban Musaf was a Korban Tzibor, and there is no Musaf bin Nedova. So there is no Nedova by Musaf. There is no Korban Musaf bin Nedova, so there could be no Tfilis Musaf bin Nedova. And the third aloha is, ain't Tfilis Nedova bin Tzibor. There's no such a thing that the Tzibor comes together and the Shliach Tzibor davens at Tfilis Nedova. Best korb, best korb and are all korb mechoyvim. And only a yochad can bring a korb and a dover. So the Rambam bases three halachas in Elchus Tfila on the similarity. Tfila are b'mokoyim korbonis. And three different halachas are based on this assumption. So I think maybe the Rambam lishitosoy. Because by korbonis, there's no third gedar. Either it's a Kor Mechoyva or it's a Kor Nidava. There is no third gather which is a Kor Mishel Rishus. Maybe there is, and that's Kor Mtoido. Interesting Chasim Soifa and Maram Shik. Chuvis Chasim Soifa or Chaim Simen Unalaf. Chuvis Maram Shik or Chaim Simen Peiches. Both assume Kor Mtoido is never a Kor Mechoyva. Arbot Sichem Lahoidois. By Korbentoid is not a chiyuv. So it's interesting. 
neither the Chsam Soifin nor the Maram Sheik don't quote sources from the Shainim. But Ha Talmud, the Rabbi Ha Godoil, the Maram Sheik was a Talmud of the Chsam Soifin and a very loyal Talmud. I can't say this with total authority because I don't. I don't spend my time and waste my time and, and you know doing something like this. But I learned a lot of Chuvas Madame Shik. I love the Sefer. And I think there are no two pages in Chuvas Madame Shik, two pages, two sides, in which he doesn't quote the Ksav Sefer at least once. Not even the Ksav Sefer quotes his father as much as the Madame Shik. So both of some Sefer and Maram Sheik both maintain that Korm Toido is always a Korm Nedova. That's a Machlokes Rashi and Shittim Kabetzis, Menoch HaSayin Tesum and Beis. Rashi Ksav Yad, Menoch HaSayin Tesum and Beis writes that one of those, each and every one of those, Dalet Shetzrichem Lahoidois, Choylish and Asrapa, Chovish Yoitzim and Beis Wasurim, Yor the Yam and Molchem and Boriois, is a Toidos Choybo. Shittim Kabetzis on this spot and say the Kotchum, we have Shittim Kabetzis on the Dab. Shittim Mekabetzis disagrees with Rashi. It's Rashi Ksavya. There are two Rashis in Menochas. Shittim Mekabetzis says, we do not find Korban Toida only when he was neither a nether to bring a Korban. Only then does it become a Choyro. So Shittim Mekabetzis supports the Maram Shittim Mekabetzis Sofer, but Rashi is Lehed Yeshalom Kedivrayim. Rosh, Peresh Rosh Nadom Yud Gimel Amad Aleph. The Rosh also says, Toida is a Chiyub. So this is a question. So according to Maram Shikan, Chazam uh, is not exactly in a dovo, but it's a rishus. But fundamentally, there are only two different types of karbonas, choivo and nedovo. So maybe the Rambam Rishitosoy, if Tfilis Av is rishus, it's essentially the same gather as nedovo. Because Tfilis are like karbonas. And there's no third gather by Karbonis. It's either Choyv or Nadova, the same regarding Tfilis. So maybe Rambam Nishitoso, but the Ravid maintains Tfilis Avis Rishos is not Nadova. Nadova is totally voluntary, but Tfilis Avis is a Takona. Either Ovois Tiknum, either Keneget Karbonis Tiknum. So if Keneget Karbonis Tiknum, why would Arvis be different than Shachas and Mincha? Very simple. Shachas is connected to Mitchell Shachar. Mincha is connected to Mitchell Ben Warbayim. Marav is connected to Averim Ufidorim that are left over. And those we are Makhtar al Gabe Misbeach Kol Halaylo. That's not a Choyvo. That is a Rishos. And therefore, Tfilis Arvis Rishos. But the Ravid maintains, even if it's a Rishos, but still it's a Takona. And therefore, Marav should be no different than Shachris and Mincha, and just like Shachris and Mincha. If you start a davening B'Torah's Choyva, and you realize you already davened, you stop in the middle of the Shema in even the middle of a Brocha. So the Ravid argues, like Abi Desalocha, there should be no difference whether it's a Tfilas Choyva or Tfilas Rishos. Rishos is not Nedava. And just like we can't start it, Tfilas Rishem Choyva, and finish it, Rishem Nedava, you can start davening Rishem Rishos and finish it, Rishem Nedava. That would be my understanding in the Machloikis. Rambam and Ravid, Shalo Kedivrei HaKesef Mishnah. So Tfilas Arvis Rishus, that is the halacha. I just want to go back a few minutes to the concept of Kiblu Aleihem Choyvo. So I brought three additional sources, Kiblu Aleihem Choyvo. Two Mugan of Rom, Svir Soima, Malchi Zechoyli Shoypes, Sadeki Veger, Lagaring Noshim, by Sukkah Lula and Shoypo. And I also brought the Nazir Shim Shana Minchas Chenech that disagree with the Mugan of Rom by Svir Soima, and they say, that Kiblu Aleyam Choyva is only relevant when there's a shita that it is a chiyav. We pass it in accordance to the opinion it's not a chiyav. Then a person could take upon himself the das ha-machmirim. But 
if there's no opinion that he's chayiv, then there's no such thing as kibbutz chayiv. What's this for? Why? Why would it be dependent whether there's an opinion, whether there's a shita that's mechayiv or not? Why? Why? So I wrote, I don't even recall where, I don't think it's printed yet, but what is the entire concept of kibbutz and ayim chayiv? What is it? What's the, why is it mechayiv? How could a person be moisif al dinayatoira? So one interpretation would be neda, midday neda. It's like nidre mitzvah. Even a person is noyag sholish pa'omim, and as a din of a neda, kal v'chayim, when a person says, is makabra, that's my nidre mitzvah. Hu oima, ashkin ve'eshna perig ze neder godel nodar le'elokei Yisroel. So maybe it's Medina and Adorim, the concept of Kiblo Alayim Choyva. Or maybe, no. It's like a personal psak. A person has the right to take upon himself Das Hamach Mio. And if it's Lachomre, it's as, as if he is his own Poisik. And he paskins for himself Kedas Hamach Mire. So the way I explain the Machlokes Mogan Avram against Nezira Shimshin is these two different approaches. According to the Nezira Shimshin and Minchas Chinuch, person has dialogic authority if it's a chumra to take upon himself das amachimirim, and that's like a psak. And therefore, according to the Nezira Shimshin and Minchas Chinuch, it's only relevant if there is a shita that's machmir. So legabe yatsmoi. A person is as if his own poisik. And he takes upon himself the Asa Machmirim. But if there's no opinion that's Machmir, then it means nothing. Mogan of Law maintains, no, it's Medina Nedorim, Nidre Mitzvah. And Nidre Mitzvah, even if there is no opinion that Nosham Archaev Bishoifer, Bissukha Belulav, but everybody agrees it's a Mitzvah. So Bani Yatoises maintain, and that's Menegash Kenaz, that a woman could make a brocha and mitzvah to say Shaz Mangrom, and so obviously it's a mitzvah. It's not a chiyah, but she still has a mitzvah. And if she has a mitzvah, it's a nidre mitzvah. And therefore the Mughan of Rome maintains, and Rebbe Kiva Ege maintains, if there is, even if there is no Das Machmio, there still is a concept of Kiblo Alayim Chayvo. So maybe the machloik is between Mogan of Rome and Rabbi Kivega on one hand, Nezir Shim Shemil Chazchanach on the other, is how do we define and understand and explain the very concept of Kiblu Aleyam Choyva? Is it a din in Nether or is it a din in Psak? If it's a din in Nether, then we could understand. Mahalach number one in Kiblo Leim Choyvo, personal Kabbalah Choyvo. But how do we understand that if in the Rambam that I mentioned at the beginning of this year, that Kiblo Leim Choyvo is Klal Yisrael Kibbal Choyvo, it's not anything personal. And therefore, I would suggest approach number three. Kiblo Leim Choyvo is neither Medin Nedorim, and there's no such a thing that a person could be his own poisik. That is not binding. There's a process of psak halacha. And there's no such thing. You take upon yourself das amachmiya, and that's machayev. Why would that be machayev? So my real opinion is Kiblu Olayam Choyvo is a din in Torah Samin Hag. And that is the opinion of the Rif and the Rambam. Kiblu Olayam Choyvo is not personal. It's not what you did tonight or yesterday night or a day before yesterday or before that. But rather, the Rambam and the Rif, Kva Nahagu Kol Yisroel. So the entire concept of Kiblu Oleim Choyvo is Torah Aminag, and it's binding. Twice in Shas do we find Minhoga Milsa Shenemar Al Titoish Torahs Imecho. In Mesechet Shabbos Legabei 
את דני הרכר שבס, בני ביישון, שלא הפליגו בספין המצור לצידון. And then there's another Gemara and Chulen Dav Tzadik Gimel regarding Yisur Ve'etor. But Torah Semenig is based on the Pesach in Mishlei Shema Beni Musa Vichobal Tzadik Shoy Samecho, and Kimlo Le'en Choybo is Metoiras Haminag. And that is the understanding of the Rif and the Rambam in Kiblu Aleihem Choyvo. So today's shir was dedicated to Tfilis Avis specifically. We already spoke about the mitzvah of Tfilis generally. Today we spoke about Tfilis Avis. So the Tfilis Shleimim, the Shleimim Redomsk, and many others swarm primarily Sefrachidis Chosidis explain. What is Tfilis Arvis about? Avram Tikken Shachras, Yitzchot Tikken Minchi, Yankov Tikken Arvis. There are many sources, not only in Sefer Chassidus, but primarily in Chazal. Yankov Avinu was the one, more than Avram and Yitzchot, that paved the way for Klal Yisrael and Golos. And when Yankov Avinu goes to where it's Mitzrayim, that is the first stage of Golos Mitzrayim. Yankov Avinu paved the way for Kiyom Klal Yisrael the Golos, and that is Yankov Tikken Arvis. But Divri Hanavi, Lilo is a moshul to night. No, it's a moshul to Golos. Night is dark, and Golos is dark. Shoimer Ma Mileel. Nafshil Hashem is Shoimrim Laboyka. Shoimrim Laboyka is the watchman, the watchman that stands all night. And he's horrified. It's frightening to be out there in the dark when you can't see what's going on. And danger lurks in the night. Shoimrim Ma'amileo. Just like the watchman, his eyes are fixed on the horizon and he wants to see sunrise and he desperately waits for the light of the sun. So by night, the predators are out there, the thieves and the burglars and the terrorists. We are waiting for sunrise, for Shach Hashem Moshiach, Yankov Tikken Arvis. Yankov took care of us, la'oyla ha'golus. So Yankov is Yisroel. And many times I quoted this ayam. Yisroel is the first letter of Shloisha Ovois va'arbe imois. Yud is Yisroel and Yankov. Shin is Soro. The Reish is Rivka and Rochel. The Aleph is Avrom. The Lamed is Leah. So the letters Yisroel are the first letters of Shloisha Ovois va'arbe imois. Yankov had all the koiches, and his gewaldig and neshoma had the shorshin neshomes of Avram and Yitzchok and Sura Rivka Rochel Leia. And that is why the entire nation is called Yankov. Klal Yisrael is a shorish of Yankov, or Yankov is called by the nation. But Yankov's name, Ki Im Yisrael Yishemecho, has become the name of the entire nation. The name of Klal Yisrael. Because Yankov more than Avrom and Yitzchak, Tiken Arvis, Yankov, Bagleituns, Yankov is with us, La'oyre Chagolos. And that is the side of Yankov, Tiken Arvis. And maybe in Panimius, that is why Tfilis Arvis Rishus, Einoi Mitzuve Voise. Arvis is the greatest challenge. And a Kodesh Baruch who expects Arvis from the depth of our heart. We are in a time of darkness, and we need the Koyach of Yankov Avinu. We need Tfilisavis more than anything else. Yes, it's a period of Hester upon him, and we are suffering, especially in America. And that's a sort of we are relatively well off relatively. We lost tens of people, but not hundreds, like our community in America. And I 
feel the pain. I speak almost on a daily basis to American Balabatim. I have family in America. Last week, I lost a friend. We learned together in Cheda. We learned together in Yeshiva, Reb David Fisher from Borough Park. Wow. And he passed away to coronavirus. He was a very special young man, a real Ben Taylor, and a Ish Chesed. So we all have lost someone, neighbors, relatives, friends, and it's a big Nesoyen. But we are melume the benes yainis. You know, I said many times in this period, the very first yid was Avraham Avinu. And he was the first one to find the Kodesh Baruch without any Messiahs. He wasn't taught by his parents. His father was an Oyved Avayda Zorah. And Avraham fought his father and he, and he destroyed his idols. He destroyed his Avayda Zorah. Kiyam Avraham Avinu, Korotel Kuchal, actually Nitno. So we would expect Avraham Avinu to have a life, a utopian life of nachas, of simcha, of bliss. It was not to be. One Nesoyen after the other. That's our destiny. That's our challenge. That's our mahus. That is the essence of being a yid. Nesoyenis. We passed far greater than our parents and grandparents did, and so will we. So this is a time of darkness. This is a lilo. Yankov Tikin Arvis. These are the Tfilis we need. Tfilis and Esther Ponim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shidbim HaKabal. All our Tfilis. So we are standing before the Shredish Iyar. Dor Shereshim is Dor Shu. Iyar is the letters of Rosh Tevis. Ani Hashem Roy Pecha. So Chodesh Nisan is drawing to an end. Friday is already Chodesh Iyar. Chodesh Nisan is a Chodesh of Geula. Chodesh Iyar is a Chodesh of Refua. Chodesh Bochus is a Chodesh of Refua. Shalem ala Choliyah me Beis Yisroel. Chodesh Bochus should be Menachem Shavure Leiv. Benachom es Tzion Tenucham, all the Avedim that lost loved ones, and all the families that still have members, that are sick, that are ill, HaKadosh Baruch Hazal Shekin Rafuas and Yeshuas and Achamais, and we should be zeichah b'korav to ago ola shleima, b'biyas Moshiach tzedkeinu, b'mahero v'yomeinu, amen. Amen. Yes, the Kloyer Kvayda Rab, before the Rab leaves us today, I just want to forward, uh, going back to something the Rav said, um, as you mentioned, unfortunately, the Matzav here is still Oyim V'noira, um, and the Rabbanu here have been more on Minyanim um, than in Eretz Yisrael. But over the next week or two, we're hoping Red Shem may have turned the corner, um, as you mentioned, and we'll have our foolish new shoes. So the possibility of what the Rav called Port and Chatz Minyanim will come back here too when it's Royal Lukach LP, the professionals. Could the Rav give us a couple of parameters since you mentioned at the beginning of this year that you had a minion that way? Everybody's asking how far is it exactly doymer to the Yisaitis of Zimun? Do you have to see each other? Do you have to hear? How do you handle Kriya Satyra? Is Kriya Satyra different than Chazar Sashatz, et cetera, et cetera? Yes. Uh, you know, I, I actually wrote a 100 page kuntras about various different aspects, chubas that I wrote during this ordeal. And it was uh, broadly disseminated. I, I, I hope you got it as well. And in the coming few days, it will be an adapted version. And I wrote uh, at length about these minyonim, the chatseris minyonim. So just briefly, you know, this has become a, a huge controversy and machoikis and it's all I don't know why. To me, it's a milsa de pshita that you could be mitztara from different merpesot or different chatseris. And I wrote a, detailed, a, a few different detailed shuvas, which I will happily send to Rabbi Garazman and make it available to the entire tzibba, to the entire group. The parameters are, you need to see each other, not the entire body, but you need to see each other's faces. Not all the 10 need to see all the nine others. 
but each and every one of them needs to see and be seen by some of the group. And you definitely need to hear each other. So if you see each other and hear each other, you are mitzvah. If there's a road between, then you cannot be mitzvah. You need to be on the same side of the street. If there's an alley between one house and the other, one chutz and the other, they are mitzvah. But not if there's a road in which cars travel or a major uh, walkway. But if you're on the same side of the street, even though you do have a driveway, they could be mitzvah on the condition you see and hear. Everybody needs to hear the shliach tzibah. If you can't hear the shliach tzibah, you can't be mitzvah. And if you are mitzvah, it's a kol dovah including berchas koyanim and kriyas So regarding kriyas the one that has a sefer Torah in his possession, uh, is oil shiva kriyim. And he says the brocha again and again and again. I just want to make one comment. There's a fundamental difference between Eitz Asol and Chutz Laaz, and I'm sure the American Rabbanim are aware of that. I don't think I need to give Eitzes to the Rabbanim in America. I have total trust. We have so many Gedoy Torah and wonderful Rabbanim in America. But we do need to take into account the Chilal Hashem aspect. So if you live not in a totally from community, having Minyon in Beshus Arabim and out loud might be very disturbing to non-Jewish neighbors. So I'm sure that the local Rabbonim take that into account as well. So in Eretz Yisrael, we're living in Eretz Yisrael. And um, most from Yidin and Eretz Yisrael live in from communities. But even if you're not a from community, even a non from Jew, Sevet Nishatn, it's not going to do them any harm. to hear people davening? In America, it's different. But I'm sure that the local Rabbonim deal with that question with the Chil Hashem aspect. But uh, regarding Tziruf, in my opinion, if neighbors see each other, hear each other, they could be Mitzdarev. I am troubled. You know, people really want to dive in with Minyan. So some of these Minyan and as a soul are not, are extremely questionable. When a person doesn't have a Merpeset or a Chotzer and he needs to stick his head out of the window and bend his neck like a giraffe, and it is only then that somebody could see him from far away, that is not Royim Zeh Zeh. He needs to be seen bishofi, seen comfortably, not when he stands on tiptoes like an acrobat and sticks his head out of the window. That's not Mitzvah. They need to see each other bishofi without making any special effort, without standing on your head and, and doing acrobatics. But if they see each other and hear each other, they could be misled upon the condition that there's no road between one chutz and the other. That is my basic opinion, and I will make it available to all of you in, in written form.